In this video, we are going to demonstrate the Revit components that make up an Aegis metal framing truss. The truss consists of an ultraspan cord shape, which forms the top and bottom cords, the ultraspan connector plate, which is a J profile that connects the truss at bearing, peaks, and pitch breaks, and the third element, the ultraspan web component, which makes the intermediate elements. In this next view, we can see the peak of the truss, where the top ultraspan cord connects with the ultraspan J-shaped connector, another top ultraspan cord, and an ultraspan web shape for the intermediate member. We're going to enter Revit Architecture 2011, and I'm going to open up a sample project that's very simple. It just shows three walls, and what we're gonna do is place this truss dynamically between these two walls. The first thing I'm going to have to do then is after I've downloaded the families, I'm going to load them into my project file. Here we see the three shapes, the ultraspan web shape, the ultraspan cord shape, and the ultraspan connector component. So we will select them all and open them up and they will show up in our generic models. I'm going to start by picking the ultraspan connector component, choosing the bottom mount option. I'm going to drag it out onto the screen. I'm going to make sure that Place on Face is selected. I'm going to select the top face of the foundation where I want the truss to start, making sure I'm dragging perpendicular to the wall plane, and place the component. Now that I've placed it, I'm going to switch over to an elevation view, and I'm going to take a look to see that it's in the right location, and it needs just a little bit of movement over, ensuring it's flush with the edge. The next thing I'm going to do since I've already got a center line created, using a reference line, all I have to do is mirror using that line. And now I have the opposite bearing point inserted. Next, I'm going to grab the ultra span cord shape and I'm going to choose the bottom cord option. And I'm going to drag that out onto the screen. I'm going to make sure that what I'm doing is touching the face of the J-shaped ultraspan connector. Let's zoom in a little bit, get it right where I want it, drag it across, and zoom in and adjust it slightly. Since the bottom flange of the cord occurs just below the connector plate, I'm going to move it down so that I can assure that it's in the right place. And if I change to wireframe mode, I can see that it's in position. So I'll switch back to my shaded view and grab that bottom ultraspan cord and use its control anchor to pull it all the way across so it's approximately in the correct position. The next element will be the top ultraspan cord. So I'm going to grab the same cord component but choosing the top cord option. Touch the face of this element and drag it up approximately where I think it needs to be. I can always come back and adjust it later. Now zooming in to the bearing point, I'm going to pull the handle to create an overhang. Of course, every project is going to be unique, and the idea here is that you can use the actual Aegis metal framing components to make your own truss configuration then hand it off to an authorized Aegis Metal Framing Fabricator for design and fabrication support. Now that I have that in place, I'm simply going to select it and perform a mirror operation. Moving now to the peak, I'm going to choose the ultraspan J-shaped connector and use the top mount option, making sure that place on face is selected and choose the face here or here. These are the faces it's going to be fastened to, so I'm going to move this across on over to here, connecting the two top cords together with this J-shaped connector. So you can see we're getting close here. Now all we need is the ultraspan web to go in between. So I'm going to grab that web shape, fasten it to this surface, and drag it down to the next surface here and I'm going to come into the peak and adjust it a little bit so it looks correct 
there we can see we have that. Remember, we're not trying to be structural engineers or truss experts here. We're just trying to use the actual components to visualize in detail the nature of this truss so that I get a great feel for what this truss is going to look like while I'm designing in Revit. And you saw earlier that included in these components is the actual galvanized metal material so that if you want to create a photorealistic rendering such as the one that I showed in the beginning of this video you can do that right out of the box without having to customize anything create your own textures or anything they're all embedded in the components and ready to go so now that we're getting these cross webs where we want them you can see that the ultra span web shapes all I have to do is select both of them choose my mirror function and mirror them across to the other side so now let's take a quick review of our truss and see if everything is configured properly there's one alignment item at the peak that we can change so we're gonna delete this item and this item and move this web down we're going to remove this plate temporarily and adjust the top cords so that they're a little bit closer together to make this a little more accurate now we will just come in here grab that top plate again and put it back where it needs to be grab this web bring it back up and we'll select this web and this one and copy them back across to the other side so let's go back to our rendered view so you can see the resulting truss in this overall view you can see that what I've done is taken one truss grouped it and replicated it to show a final roof system Visit AegisMetalFraming.com to download and use these components today.